All right, guys, while you guys are uh, braving the, the weather out there and headed to Cheyenne and learning all about the state legislature and everything else with Mr. Munger and the gang, I'm putting together a little video for you for Monday. Uh, as you can see, we're going to be multiplying polynomials, and we're going to be using the FOIL method. Uh, in the past, we've been multiplying polynomials by monomials. That's what our quiz is on on Friday. Now you'll see how we'll build on that and, and go even a little further uh, as far as more difficult problems, but again, similar process. Uh, just like we talked about before, need to know the distributive property and need to know the rules of exponents. Um, when we were doing these in the past, we figured out that we're just just distributing that outside term to each thing inside the term, and then we're cleaning it up. That's multiplying polynomials by a monomial. Now we're actually going to be multiplying polynomials by each other, but don't, don't fret because it actually turns out we're just going to continue using the distributive property. And you'll see what I mean uh, with these examples and when I talk about the FOIL method when we're multiplying binomials specifically. But for anything when we're multiplying polynomials, we're just going to extend the distributive property. Let me give you an example. I have 2x plus 5 times 3x plus 2. The only thing that's changed from my first example is I've added a plus 5 in that first term. And so now I have two polynomials. Specifically, I have two binomials that I'm going to multiply. Uh, the idea is I'm going to distribute the 2x to everything first, just like we have. So I'm going to take 2x times 3x. I can always put a plus, And then I'll take 2x times 2. And that's nothing new for us. Now what changes is, well, I also have that plus 5 that I need to distribute. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'll take plus, And then I will take 5 times 3x and plus 5 times 2. So notice you're going to take each term uh, in each polynomial, and you're going to multiply them. Uh, you take 2x times 3x, and that gives you 6x squared. Uh, then I have 2x and 2, and that gives us 4x, just like before. Now the new terms, we would also have a 15x and a 10. And then what you'll see, if you have common polynomials where you see this is an x plus some constant term and an x plus some constant term, you'll be able to clean up the middle by combining like terms. And so your answer ends, ends up actually becoming 6x squared plus 19x plus 10. And so notice, uh, as you work this out, you're just going to distribute everything. And I know I'm kind of getting this thing pretty marked up for you. But so I'm going to take a 2x times a 3x, the first term times the first term. And then I'm going to take the 2x times the last term here, 2x times 2. Then I'll work in the middle, 5 times 3x, and then 5 times 2. And uh, what that gives you, uh, what you should see, is that there's an order going on there when we're multiplying polynomials that works every time. Binomials, excuse me. So the FOIL method is what will help us multiply binomials. This will remind you uh, the order to take when you're presented with two binomials that you need to multiply. FOIL is an acronym uh, standing for first, outer, inner, and last. And if you can remember that you're going to take the first terms times each other, the outer terms times each other, uh, the inner terms times each other, and then the last terms times each other, uh, that basically gives you what you need to do in these situations. Uh, a little bit more of a visual example of it, if I was going to take A plus B times C plus D, notice I take the first terms and I have AC. I take the outer terms and I'd have AD. I'd have the inner terms, which would be BC, and then the last terms, which would be BD. Uh, hopefully that helps you and gives you an idea of, of what, what's going on. Let's do a couple examples, and then I think you'll start to get this idea. Um, again, first, outer, inner, last when we're working this. So the first terms I would take, first times first, that gives me 8x squared. That's the first terms. Then we said we're going to take the outer times the outer. So now I'm noticing outer term, the outside most on the left, and the outside most on the right. Uh, 4x times 6 would give me 24x. That's first, outer. Now we'll go inner terms. Uh, the inside most terms, 3 times 2x would give me a plus 6x. And then you see we have the last terms. In this case, the last terms would be 3 and 6. And 3 times 6 gives me 18. Now remember, if you have similar binomials, if they have the same properties here, there will be a way to combine like terms. And you see I have 8x squared plus 24x plus 6x plus 18. And so when I simplify that up, I'd say 8x squared plus 30x plus 18. Uh, let me give you another example of this, uh, just changing the rules of exponents. But again, first times first, outer times outer, outer, inner, and then last. So I'd have 3x, now this would be cubed because of my rules of exponents, plus 6x uh, minus 5x squared and then minus 10. And so notice, because this didn't have the similar look, this is an x term, whereas this is an x squared term, you're not going to have anything to combine. You might just need to clean it up and get it in a standard form. 3x cubed minus 5x squared. Remember, the sign goes with it. And then we have plus 6x, and my constant term should be last. And I end up with a polynomial of the third degree, which would be cubic. Um, don't fret, but it even can expand to even bigger polynomials. So now I'm not multiplying binomials anymore. I have a binomial times a trinomial. But I'm still going to extend that distributive property like we talked about. Take the first term times everything, and then take the second term times everything. 4x times 2x squared gives me 8x cubed. Then I have a minus 20x squared. Again, I'm just multiplying 4x times each term in the second polynomial. 
plus 16x. That takes care of the first term of my binomial. Now I've got to take a negative 2 times everything, and so a negative 2 times 2x squared should give me a negative 4x squared. Notice how I'm setting this up to help me clean up down the road. Minus 2, minus 5, when I multiply that, I should get a positive 10x. And then my last term is a negative 2 times a positive 4 gives me negative 8. I've set myself up with the uh, vertical method here to clean things up, and I end up with 8x cubed minus 24x squared because they are coming together. Same with the 26x and then minus 8, and that'd be my final answer since there's nothing else I can clean up or combine. Um, one more like that for you to try on your own before class on Monday along with taking down all these notes. Um, I would say if you, you look at this example very clearly, you can follow along and see uh, how you would approach this problem 2x plus y times that trinomial that you see. Um, might make you apply it in different ways. For example, if I asked you to find the area of a rectangle in centimeters squared, notice we have a length of 5x minus 2, a width of 2x plus 5. Remember, variables just stand for some unknown number. Uh, we still know that area equals length times width or base times height. And so we're going to take 5x minus 2 as a binomial and multiply it times 2x plus 5 as a binomial. And again, first times first, I have 10x squared. Then I take the outside times the outside, and that gives me plus 25x. Inside would be a minus 4x, and then the last term would be minus 10. And again, you see where we can combine those middle terms. And that will be huge when we get down the road to factoring. Uh, but we end up with 10x squared plus 21x minus 10. And then make sure we have a label. This would be centimeters squared. Um, again, very basic stuff. If you, if you keep in mind uh, the rules of exponents and the distributive property, just understand that we're extending the distributive property. And then obviously the special case where we're multiplying binomials, uh, in that case when we multiply binomials, you have some different tricks with the FOIL method. Uh, have these notes ready to go by Monday. Uh, try that example on your own, and then we should be good to go.